Over 7,000 members of BC's Waterfront Union walked off the job Saturday. With growing concerns over automation, union leader Rob Ashton says the strike is a necessary step in protecting his workers' futures. Labour peace in this industry comes from free collective bargaining. Labour peace in this industry comes from governments staying out of the business between a union and their employers. The BC ports represents almost a quarter of all goods that come in and out of Canada. So far, the strike has led to a suspension on the import of consumer goods and most exports of raw materials. Federal Labour Minister Seamus O'Regan is currently in Vancouver in talks with both sides. However, there are already calls for the government to implement back-to-work legislation, including from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Joining me now is Perrin Beatty, the President of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Beatty, it's good to talk to you again. Glad to be with you. Thank you. So we're just a few days into this and you're already calling for the government to intervene. Why? Well, we put about, about $800 million worth of goods through the ports every single day. About a quarter of the trade that Canada does with the rest of the world goes through those West Coast ports. As a result, then, this is something that affects the whole of the Canadian economy and families and businesses right across Canada. How, how would the average Canadian feel this? I mean, what does this strike potentially mean for them? Depending on how long it goes on, obviously, the impact will continue to compound the longer that it goes. But we could be seeing shortages of, uh, of goods on store shelves. We certainly would be seeing higher prices as a result of it. It's inflationary in its nature. And we could be finding jobs lost as well if, if uh, our exporters are unable to get to, to market. So what response have you gotten to this point from the government? Because I know I've seen comments from Labour Minister Seamus O'Regan saying they're not looking past the bargaining table, more or less at this point. And they, they are, he's in Vancouver now trying to manage talks with both sides. So what have they said to you, your group, in terms of your request? So far, that's the government's response. Uh, we're focusing on the table. That's it. We're not doing anything else. Um, clearly, uh, that's not good enough at this point. Uh, the question is, how's that working so far? The answer is, it isn't. But what's wrong with allowing the two sides some time to negotiate a settlement? I, I mean, this is a unionized workforce. They have the right to take job action uh, under their collective agreement. What's wrong with allowing this to play out for a bit to see if they can get, get a deal? All of us would, would prefer a negotiated settlement. And that's what the negotiations were about up until now. But what we've done is to move to a totally different stage where the union has gone on strike and where the ports are being shut down. This is having very serious consequences for Canadian families and for Canadian businesses right across the country. So this is a fundamentally different phase we're in right now. Um, if, if the two parties were saying we, were, we would be prepared to go to binding arbitration, that would be acceptable. Uh, if they had reached an agreement, that would be acceptable. But what's not acceptable is to have the port shut down. What are the uh, acute pressure points that you think the economy would feel right now? I, I know a lot flows through these ports, and it's more than just the Port of Vancouver, though that would be the biggest area affected by this. You know, in terms of the, eco the economic picture and the national supply chain, what are the, the acute pressure points that you're worried about most? These are two of our three biggest ports in Canada, and so it's, it's of great consequence to us. And goods that appear on store shelves across the country come in through these West Coast ports, and then products that we want to ship abroad, whether it's everything from canola to manufactured goods, go out through those ports. When the system breaks down, what you, what you find is that there are very serious consequences, both for companies that are exporting and also for companies that need inputs uh, to bring into Canada and for families that are looking for the products that they need. So you've called for the back-to-work legislation. To this point, the government has said no. Uh, I mean, what more will your organization do to try to uh, put some pressure on, on the federal government in this? Well, we will be continuing to reach out to our members across the country to get examples from them of the ways in which this is, is hurting Canadian business and the Canadian economy. And we'll certainly be reaching out to other organizations as well to look for their support, to have Parliament get back to work and to, to do its job to ensure that our supply chains can function in Canada. Well, this is one of the challenges, isn't it, is that uh, the House of Commons has risen for the summer break and uh, you have a government that you're lobbying that gets its uh, confidence and supply agreement from the federal New Democrats, which historically and ideologically supports organized labor. So what do you think your chances are, given that political dynamic, Mr. Beatty, of getting the federal liberals, liberals to move in this direction? 
I think the important thing is the government has to recognize what its responsibility is to Canadians, and that's to protect the Canadian economy, protect Canadian jobs, and to ensure that, that we don't continue to drive inflation up. Uh, as a consequence, then, each day that, that more damage is being done, I think government members of parliament right across Canada are going to be hearing from their constituents about the need for them to get back to work and to ensure that, that we can get goods flowing again in and out of Canada. Is there a tip? The, the, other, the other point, David, to make as well is, is precisely the point you were making. Parliament isn't sitting. It takes time to get Parliament back. Even if the government were calling Parliament back today, it would take time for them to be able to reconvene Parliament and to get legislation in front of Parliament. And that means that every day's delay just pushes this off that much further and allows more damage to be done. Is there a tipping point uh, where this becomes a, a real economic crisis for supply chains and, and supplies in the country? I mean, we're three days into it. Is, there, is it day six? Is it day nine? Is it day 15? When, when, when is the tipping point in your view? The tipping point was when the ports were shut. It was Canada Day. I can't think of a worse way to, to commemorate Canada Day than to shut down the West Coast ports. Already, businesses are making decisions now about how they'll get their goods in and out of Canada. That means they're making a decision now to ship through American ports, or they're making decisions now to, to uh, try to, to get their goods in some other way. Uh, these are decisions they can't afford to simply put off. And every day that goes on, we're going to see cancelled contracts, and we're going to see increased damage being done to the Canadian economy. Perrin Beattie, President of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much, David. Okay, a quick update on this. In a new statement from his office, Federal Labor Minister Seamus O'Regan is giving no indication that Ottawa plans to introduce back-to-work legislation, saying, we are not looking past the bargaining table because the best deals are made at the table. Federal mediators continue to support the parties in their negotiations.